So yeah but yeah so going into uh, universities mm. uh, you know for me I was just I was coming into campus to to learn mm-hmm. mostly mm-hmm. Um, because the, the first time I actually did interact with computers is when I went to my high school yeah uh from one and you know like I just got intrigued by this thing where you can click and something appears on the screen that yeah. was the thing that was just yeah. mesmerizing for me is that you have a keypad yeah. and you click numbers on yeah. the keypad and yeah. they appear on the screen I was like yeah. eh, it's yeah. magic behind this thing i want to know yeah, and yeah. they told me the whole science behind this thing is called computer science ah uh, you, you are sold out <laughs> yes, uh, if you become a very good student yeah. you might have the opportunity to go and study computer science that is in form 1 that is in form 1 and, and um, yeah. in my school so i went to a school called the uh, st joseph's uh, school rapogi mm. it's uh, inside the sugar can uh, used for sony sugar mm. is this seminary um, or no It's, okay. it's Catholic, but it's not a seminary. Oh, okay. um, I know another seminary there. I don't know by the name of St. Paul or something, but go yeah. ahead. Yep. So w- what used to happen, actually, mm. you never got into computer studies directly. Mm-hmm. You had to be top 30 out of the over 200 students <laughs> for you to be given a chance. Because uh, yeah. I mean, our lab, I think, had two computers then mm. during our year. So there is um, also demand and supply issue. Yeah, yeah, demand and supply issue. What they used to do is you had to be in the top 30 in your first exam in Form 1 yeah. for you to get a chance to study computer studies. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And, and so, do you think they also knew it's not that straightforward that they had to like save some guys or... Um, I mean, the reason you were given, I think, was just a supply and demand oh, issue. Okay, okay. Um, yeah, but also computer studies in itself as a, a course, um, a subject in high school also used to be very trying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It used to be very yeah, trying. Yeah, yeah. Not that yeah. I did it. By the way, I saw my first computer in first year. Mm-hmm. So, so oh, like, first year but I owned a first computer in second year. Mm. Maybe you guys. That Maybe. sounds uh, very familiar. Mesongo, <laughs> I think, uh, also owned his first computer. That I could configure, <laughs> break, install Linux, and install, yeah. you know, do all the magic, create my own project. Yeah. And you know, our computers there, you could not do anything with them. You could uh, ask them out to install a few things and, and mic. Yes. Uh, but beyond that, uh, you know, <laughs> don't don't go beyond anything that will, will, will create something. Mm. And now you 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 are you're studying the computer studies. How was it for you? Did you study the four years or? Yeah, I studied the four years. I was actually meant to drop it in um, form three, mm-hmm. just based on performance. Yeah. So what will happen is I will be position one, mm-hmm. but be position last mm-hmm. in computer studies. Ah, and what um, was the reason? It was a class of five people. Oh, so you were like... Uh, so I was anyways. number five, but I'm number last. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. this is actually a funny time. So we used to have something called visitors mm. in school. Mm-hmm. What so, is that? So visitors is when you are last in a subject. Mm-hmm. So there was a time, I remember the last exam mm. um, of Form 3 going to Form 4. Mm. I was a visitor in computer studies uh-huh. with 78%. What used to happen and to I the And I was visitors? number one in the class. <laughs> <laughs> so you used to remain in school yeah. um to st- to to get extra coaching on the uh, on the subject. So okay. let's say you're number last in math, yeah. you will remain in school. Yeah. For how many weeks? For an additional week. Okay. So everybody else goes home and you remain in school for an additional week yeah. to do more work on that particular subject. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, but of course fair. many many yeah. yeah, many teachers were surprised like what are you doing here? You're a <laughs> student. Why are you why are you a visitor? Yeah, yeah. And uh, of course yeah, there was that um, you know push for me to drop uh, yeah. computer studies because the belief was that you know it's going to bring down my I see. I see. Yeah, um, because, my, yeah, yeah my, your my, average. Yeah, my average grading. Mm-hmm. Um, you know how the final exam stuff, yeah. 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 Uh, so works, but I was very clear that um, you know I just wanted to do computer science mm. um, and even in the course selection mm-hmm. um, I only selected computer science nothing else nothing else. no medicine no veterinary everybody else wanted nothing. me to, to do medicine but um, ah. I was I was determined I wanna that I, I, I want to do computer science if you are like you did computer science you see how our doctors are suffering right now <laughs> I don't know if you have seen it yeah, yeah I mean uh, yeah fortune you, favors the brave you see <laughs> uh, and you are doing great actually not, not only great but also you're doing great in in the computing field uh, through the solution that you guys are offering 
But beyond that, you get to the university, the University of Nairobi, mm. Chiromo campus. <laughs> what strikes you like this is, uh, this is what I expected, or this is beyond what I expected? Um, you mean for the campus itself? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <sighs> I think so. I think my experience is probably different uh, mm. from Tesh's experience because mm. you know, for me, um, it was my first time in Nairobi. Yeah. Um, and so everything was everything was different. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I came to Nairobi. I went to one of my uncle's place. Mm. He hosted me before yeah. coming into yeah. campus because yeah. during the admission day, I actually had to come and admit myself. Yeah. Um, in the whole process, so I think everything was just. Um, you know, too big for me. Mm. The school was big, the roads are big, the mm. houses are big, the cars are big. <laughs> so that alone is an achievement by sale. Like, yeah, these I things. was like, I mean, uh, this is the city. Yeah. So yeah. They, uh, I'm, I'm in the process of making it. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so it was pretty, pretty exciting. Yeah. Um, then, of course, you can remember the the life at the prefabs. You know? mm, mm. Um, yeah, where everyone is dropped and... Like, <laughs> are you doing computer science? No, no, no. no exactly. I'm doing law. I'm doing law. I'm uh, doing economics. Are you doing uh, law? No, no, no. I'm doing economics. And the guy sleeps until midday. <laughs> <laughs> See, for you, you looked for, for your, for your, for your, the, the degree you want to do, right? It yes. was not like, I want to do computer science. How, I, how, I, how was it for you? Nah, I was, I was certain I wanted to do computer science. Mm -hmm. Going in, back to high school. Mm. Um, you know, I got fascinated by computers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I started reading up biographies of people who are building businesses mm. in, mm -hmm. in, in in computing. Yeah. So I was the biggest fan of Bill Gates, mm. Zuckerberg. Or, mm. You know, look online, these platforms, how do they build this? What's mm -hmm. the story? Mm -hmm. um, so I knew I wanted to build similar. Mm -hmm. And that's how I ended up choosing computer science. Yeah, so yeah. So I was also very focused. I knew this is the only thing I want to study. Yeah. Um... But um, my, my campus story was very interesting. Yes, yes. Like, I'm sure you remember, I used to do a lot of hustle. Of course. On the side. Of course, so, of course, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the school would need to print stuff, brochures, or mm. to design mm. stuff. I you was, had a tax shop, right? I, uh, no? Yeah, we actually co-owned a tax shop <laughs> with this guy. <laughs> Later on or in first year? No, in uh, third year. Third year, okay. when we, yeah, we, we, we vied mm. one elective. Uh, you guys were together. both leaders, right? Yes, yes, one yes. Uh, module one, one module two. two. Okay, yes. okay. Yeah, so for those who don't understand, mm. uh, self-sponsored students like mm. us, yeah, uh, and then government-sponsored students uh, mm. like Misongo. So mm. both of us represented the school of competing. Yeah, and uh, as through that, you yeah. get to own a business in the school. Yeah, so you're given that's one a, of the like it's packages. one of the parks. Yeah, so you're given a room. Mm -hmm. uh, I was, I was staying outside campus, so I rented out my room, but mm. then we were given also this tax shop to run, so mm. we would collect rent um, mm. with, with Mesongo. Mm -hmm. um, but <coughs> the, the, the campus experience for me is where I saw, you know, you, saw, you see all sorts of people. Mm -hmm. Like I was exposed to uh, a whole new world, mm -hmm. especially just seeing how, you know, a lot of people in our class were top students in, yeah. in, 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 in you know, high school. Yeah. Top students in the country. Alliance. Like Tare. very smart people. Mm, mm. All of them uh, were, in, were in this class, right? Mm. <laughs> I came in. And I, was, I was a bit confused. But yeah. I, I felt... Out of place. Out, very out of place. Yeah. Uh, we used to sit in the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with other modules to students, you know, yeah. who've just come, you've chosen one of the best courses in the school. Yeah. But you have your privilege to be in the class because, you know, your you parents could, affo it, yeah. could afford it. Yeah. And um, I mean, you had to meet certain grades. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but also, you needed to to be able to afford the school fees. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of us guys would sit in the back, and here was this guy who. He's sitting in the back with us, mm. but he was a uh, module one, module one student. Yeah. So, and I think there was a lot of curiosity on yeah. both sides, and yeah. that's how we ended up being friends. I was asking him, "What? <laughs> what are you, you doing back you here? You should be sitting in the f in, in, in the first uh, yeah. row, like yeah. the other smart yeah. kids. Yeah. We have <laughs> come to support you, <laughs> exactly. to make it in life, <laughs> and you're here with us. 
in the city with the back with us. <laughs> so I was wondering, what's, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah, and I'm sure he was wondering the same thing. What, yeah. Like, uh, you, you, you're never, you never come to all classes. You mm. mean, like, in fact, I was missing, I think, maybe mm. 60 or 70 percent of the classes. <laughs> you are out there doing what, the what are you doing? Like, if you're not coming to class, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so for him, he was asking friends. you that, right? Yes. Ah. <laughs> so you are like, I want to learn how this guy is surviving on 30 percent of class attendance. <laughs> And you want to know what is this guy throwing his future away by sitting back here with the <laughs> 0.7? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah. So that's how yeah. you guys got to know each other. And then, yeah. did, did, it, did it make you to become even more serious with school and, and, and maybe attend more class? Or how, how, how did that friendship, uh, yeah. you know? I think um, most what, what I think came out of it that was very valuable yeah. is appreciating. Uh, each other's strengths yeah and we realized at that point how much we complimented each other because yeah uh even as friends you yeah. know just through exposure <laughs> yeah uh because being an entrepreneur means you know you need to uh be open to learning be resourceful mm. and all that mm. uh, be able to you know connect with yeah. people from different walks of life yeah yeah you know you need to be able to convince people on on your vision yeah. and yeah. you know there's so many I'd call it social, or that, at least that's what they, they call it, mm. the social skills. Mm. Uh, and that's, that's, that was the biggest thing for me, you know, visiting prefabs mm. and seeing people survive on uh, mm. How much was the prefab day? per day? Four shillings? <laughs> Four shillings. <laughs> if, 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 yeah, I think if you translate the... We Even not a cent. Maybe 4,600. Set, Which is set, like four shillings a, a day or something. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like so uh, four months is like uh, how many ma- how many days are those? Who is the <laughs> mathematician in the house? It's we are all mathematicians. Ninety. Anyway, 90 so. I think a semester needs to be about three months. Ah. So ninety. Four thousand yeah. five hundred, you say. So you can imagine that experience. Like where fifty bob a day, which is like yeah. fifty cents. Right now, actually, they are paying more than that. I, I, yeah, 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 well, yeah, yeah. Okay. And the same, same prefabs you can imagine 10 years ago now. <laughs> they have not it's been It's crazy, bro. It's crazy, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to go back then, you know, try and do something about it. Amen, so, amen. Not about people sleeping, though, but <laughs> <laughs> the whole ecosystem because I was there the other day. You're you there and you see, yeah, 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 yeah. It was interesting. I mean, like, one dollar, you have uh, three or four meals in a day mm. with one dollar, mm. mm. uh, while us. Well, you used to go to lunch in a different place. <laughs> and Mr. Hook can tell you the story of the shock yeah. uh, when he saw us buying food for like one meal, like lunch for $3. You're like, these guys are bowling. I was like, just like, <laughs> that's my budget for the whole week. <laughs> 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 this guy is eating one lunch. So it's, yeah. it's, it opened us up to quite different experiences. Yeah. Uh, but we, we built a friendship. From yeah. There. yeah. 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 And I know some guys actually, uh, even beyond eating a dollar, three meals, <laughs> they went further and bought uh, the electrical cookers, which were Juakali made, right? Mm. Uh, they're not standard electrical cookers. And to some extent, I have had prefabs burn a few times. Yeah, yeah, out because of, that. of, of, yeah. The, of the load. Yeah, um, yeah. Because, you know, I think some some of the things you have to appreciate is given the environment where some of the people come from, you know, mm. with, with that help money yeah. is what they sponsor. I, I used to have a roommate who used to have his other um, two siblings in yeah. school just with the help money. With the help money. Yeah. And yeah. he still needed to survive through through campus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I would actually bring him unga from my village. We have a lot of maize. Mm. And he will use the unga to make porridge. Mm. He will use the unga to make ugali. Mm-hmm. And all he needed in a day is skuma of 10 shillings. Yeah. And that's a day done. So yeah. 10 times 30, only $3 for the whole month. Yeah. And the rest um, of the money pays the school fees for other two siblings. For other two siblings. And, and yeah. that, I don't know if you guys heard about this. They want to discontinue help for some reason i don't know why yeah I, I, it's so sad so i have had I, you know just because of my background I, i've gone through the whole proposition mm. um for the new financing so they're putting together a new financing structure for mm-hmm. um you know uh, for the government sponsorship um yeah. into tertiary education yeah and 
I think that it's a little bit dishonest given that most of the people that are actually working on this bill probably went through the, the that Absolutely. system and yeah. you know understand how important it is. Yeah. Um I I strongly think that it's something that should be reconsidered. Yes, yes. Um because if you look at the way they're trying to determine the poverty index to then mm. determine how much is going to go into the sponsorship yeah. um of the students, yeah. I will say that we do not have the proper systems yeah, yeah. um to actually achieve uh, something meaningful yeah, yeah. um <coughs> using that that system uh, and, today yes and do you know what is surprising is that the other day I was getting my not the other day but uh I think two years ago I was getting my clearance uh form from Elm mm. at the it's what's the name of the plaza um the anniversary anniversary yeah. plaza when I was getting the Elm the, there was just one floor with all these offices and i went to that floor actually thinking you know it's the same thing but i was surprised that they have taken almost the whole land mm. yes and that of course is not coming at a pocket change right uh and my question was when i had the the proposal of the bill is that wh- why would why would you guys be this extravagant whereas the main reason for this funding is to go to the student and i'm i'm sure the money they pay their buyer maybe they can when they listen to this you can correct me um they can buy a whole building and you know they cut on the costs because at the end of the day if this fund doesn't exist i can i can assure you like half of the brain drain that will happen in this country will not actually the country will actually go at a loss more than the fund itself yeah. as well as uh, you know guys who will discontinue the school because also the, i hear there's another proposal of increasing the school fee so which means if the help doesn't increase then even the help itself is not enough for you to go to school so either way it needs to be looked at you said and and it's it's kind of sad and guys like us actually can speak openly about i don't know if you got help but i did get help <laughs> uh so we, model two are we, getting help yeah yeah so yeah. we need to speak about these things and and and, and like you know i'm sure there is a way of course if there's money crunch and stuff mm-hmm. or if people are not paying back the money um and, and there's a better way of doing it as yeah, you say yeah. yeah so um here you are at the campus and now you have started exchanging thoughts hey i can do this i can do the other uh i can be an entrepreneur i can write codes and you guys did you start now coming up with the you know businesses that you could run together or uh, this came at a later stage well, it came on the campus yeah. yeah we we actually so i think just taking you back to actually how we met so yeah. of course um, yeah. i was sitting back uh, as tesh mentioned it was a bunch of you know the self sponsored students yeah. um, sitting behind but for me it's i always like through my school life mm. um anywhere i go even in church i just mm. like to sit behind yeah. <laughs> uh, just because of one my concentration levels and yeah. then two uh, just curiosity ah, i always want to see everything, everything. yes ah. <laughs> and interact with new people and ah. all this so that's why we we did meet with tesh and i asked him hey dude man like mm. you mm. keep asking what assignments we have <laughs> uh, you know what we learned hey. can you decide if you want to be in school <laughs> or outside of school yeah uh, you know but he was humble enough to tell me you know this school thing is not the only thing i'm doing ah okay <laughs> it's not like i'm sleeping when i'm not in school yeah um i actually have a business I'm, mm. I'm I'm running in 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 town mm. and uh, you know that just captured my interest yeah. and um, it was actually interesting because most of the self sponsored students mm. used to have side gigs mm. that they used to do so you're like there's this other thing that is yeah, happening I'm here like, and I'm know, missing out yeah you know like most of us the um government sponsored the government sponsored yeah. students yeah. Yeah. Uh, we just used to go to class go to prefabs <laughs> go to prefabs do the assignment do the go assignment. to class <laughs> yeah but to be honest like these guys had uh, a whole other life yeah, yeah. um you know uh, going around apart mm. from mm. um just studying some of them will sell games mm. some you know they were just doing a bunch of um mm. other things um uh around mm. so i started being curious and hanging out with them hence how i discovered they were paying three dollars for lunch mm-hmm. which was not mm-hmm. a very good mm-hmm. experience <laughs> uh, you know, I did you ask them how can i afford three dollars no, no, i just lunch. said you guys have to pay you're the ones who brought me here ah. <laughs> i cannot just take, otherwise uh, you're missing your next two day meal yeah it's, ah. uh, it's not going okay. to be affordable mm. um but um you know the 
positive effect of that is I started seeing that, you know, of course, just apart from coming to school to study, mm. you can start doing other things. Yeah. Um, you know, so got more intrigued in, okay, um, what else are you doing? So mm. he, he was doing um, uh, graphic design mm. and web design. Mm. Um, I didn't have any experience on graphic design, but I said, of course, when you have the next gig, man, yeah. Yeah. Oh, on, yeah. on, on web design, <laughs> I, I, I me chime along. in uh, 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 like a chord here and there. Uh, uh, yeah. So and the guy was like, I have my first employee. <laughs> <laughs> That's how entrepreneurs think. You can tell us how so. he thought about Chief, it. What, was that the thought? Like, now I can take two gigs instead of one. I mean, you know, Mesongo is a smart man. Yeah. He, I think from the onset, oh, yeah. he wanted to share the pie. Ah, <laughs> so, like, so, Chief, okay. I don't want to be an employee here. <laughs> can I have my right of... Yeah. yeah, how much are you making? Okay, yeah. okay I'll do that. In fact, mm -hmm. you let me do the old job. You just go and bring more. <laughs> so, <laughs> you can have what you have, maybe 50 50. Yeah. Even you don't need to do anything, <laughs> just be getting this gig. <laughs> exactly. Ah, did it, did it scale? I, yeah, we did. We did a lot of projects. Yeah. Uh, we yeah. became partners at that point, mm. in second year. Mm. So, we reg registered uh, a software company, mm. Sozi, back yeah. in 2013. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, you know, Misongo was feeling that he could now punch in the next, yeah. the next weight. Yeah. So he said, "Now let's look for software gigs." Yeah. Yeah. And, Serious uh, projects. Yes. Mm. This, this is a web design for <laughs> Joomla. <laughs> yes. This is not my thing. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. That's how. And also for your side, you are confident, like I can get proper proper software platforms to build. Yes. So yeah, we, yeah, yeah. we, we work together on mm. you know, doing proposals mm. for bigger projects. Yeah. We are also both you know, curious and just see opportunities. Mm. So we went on to propose um, software development work for companies that yeah. we thought yeah. would do with digitizing yeah. the processes, yeah. et cetera. So that's... <laughs> I remember that's, that story. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Huh? That's, that's how, we, <laughs> yeah. how crazy did it get, uh, these proposals? <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing to... You know there are guys who are actually another Mesongo and Tesh? Yes, yes, yes. Out there. So, so maybe it's a good thing that they, they learn yeah. from you. Yeah, so we, you know, we did so much of those proposals. And, yeah. um, you know, typically how, how these things work is you apply for opportunities and tenders. Mm. And uh, in fact, one of our first startups was uh, a tender mm. automation platform because we're like, this is so much paperwork. Mm. Why, why don't we digitize it? Yeah. Uh, and based on that, this is we came up with a platform mm -hmm. that was connecting people who have jobs mm -hmm. uh, and tender opportunities mm -hmm. with businesses, mm -hmm. and we thought this could be done better. Yeah. Uh, fast forward, that business has failed uh, <laughs> terribly. Uh, face fast. Face <laughs> 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 so good. Uh, we learned a lot of good lessons. I, I think we, we, we spent probably a one and a half years building that business. <laughs> uh, building yeah. the whole module or just the business? <laughs> both both the business side of things so yeah. mostly tesh will run uh, the business side yeah. of things and yeah. i i was building the the tech for it yeah um but we did learn quite quite a number of lessons mm -hmm. you know like we should probably find the clients first to uh customers or clients the customers Custo customers <laughs> yeah or users rather or, or use yeah. you know, but, but you know when you're looking at a tendering platform more customers oh, okay. that yeah. have the yeah. users to yeah uh because we actually did get people that were really interested, but when we went through the procurement department, mm. the procurement department wouldn't accept this because, you know, we learned like they used to spend like, they will go to Mombasa like for 10 days mm. to do tender evaluation, mm. yet this platform was automating tender evaluation. <laughs> like, you know, you're just eating into people's per DMs, their only chance to travel to the cost. Yeah, there is yeah. no way your platform is going to succeed so, in so, doing that. So what you're trying to solve, you're trying to create a problem for it. Yes, exactly. The way it was, it's working, still works the same way today yeah. because it's designed to work like that. Yeah. You know, I, I, engineers, unfortunately, we mostly always think about the efficiency mm. that um, technology brings, yeah. um, you know, without um, really thinking about the entire problem scope. Mm. The human of, of, aspect. Yeah, the human aspect, how the humans think about it. And mm. I think there is this famous story about, um, I don't know which of these NGOs it was, yeah. that built um, a water, like piping mm. uh, solution for mm. people in a certain area. Mm. I, I, I don't know, it's somewhere north, north of Kenya. Mm. Um, and then they realized that the women mm. weren't going to weren't using the piped water mm -hmm. and instead just preferred to go and fetch water from the one single place mm. um, that they were trying to get them away from. And the reason was because mm. 
uh, given of how the, um, the, the the culture is set up there, mm -hmm. women don't just leave home. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was the only mm -hmm. opportunity for, for them socializing. To leave to leave home, yeah. Yeah. you know, just and go and see people and yeah. meet with their friends. Ah, so you will fetch water at the same time. Ah, so they never wanted water to come home. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it takes away the yeah. flexibility yeah. of yeah. being able to socialize. Yeah. Um, so that was kind of like the similar problem we started facing with yeah. Um, yeah. The, the tendering thing. More so for yeah. public institutions yeah. is, um, you know, the it was just the right opportunity mm. to get out of office, mm. go and do tender evaluation. Mm. Yeah. And, and do you think also corruption, like it's something that they do want to like eradicate with this platform? Yeah, I think because of the visibility, yeah. Yeah. you know, also yeah. it's, it's a chance. Yeah. You know, when, when, when like the, the processes are not working, yeah. it, it's something similar to what you're seeing going on with our passport issue. I think yeah. you saw the government uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, talk, talking about it. Yeah. Um, I recently just applied for uh, my my wife just applied for passport yeah. uh, for herself and, and our young girl, uh -huh. um, and then so we were asking ourselves, why do we do? Because if you've applied for a passport in Kenya, yeah. you submit everything but online, have. yeah, yeah, but you then go print out the forms yeah. and have to take them desk by desk yes. in the entire process. Yes, like what is really the essence of the online application if you think about it? That's a good question. It's just because you, you can feel the same same information. You can just feel it and take including it all the biometrics. Around. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. nothing has really been automated, mm. if you think about it. But I do feel that it's because there is the the way the process has been set up. It's mm. an opportunity, of course, for mm. people, mm. you know, to, to benefit out of it. Yeah. To benefit out mm. of it. To so be corrupt about it. Let's yeah, say yeah. the way it is, you know. <laughs> yeah. And and get and also I feel like uh, to some extent I feel like I, s I should empathize with the guys who, who set themselves for corruption because okay, there is an excuse always. Like, oh you know, we are not paid enough, the life is expensive, yeah. or maybe, you know, it's a it's a way of making an extra buck. And there's someone actually who, who, who proposed uh, in a in a in a banter somewhere. Mm. Like if government today said we can you can be corrupt as much as you want, but we tax it. You know, corrupt would, would drop to like fifty percent or ten percent automatically, because now it's official that you can do all your thing. Like you know, our police don't do shit, yeah. right? If you think about it, by the way, when you need the police, might not show up for you. <laughs> but if they stop you, any police stops you, what comes into your mind? Yeah. You have to part with money. Otherwise, they'll take you to court and you'll part with maybe more money. Mm -hmm. So there's no way you're getting out of that that circle of... So in, in some ways, it, it just goes without saying that corruption is there. And everyone knows everyone is corrupt in one or the other. As much as you come into my forte, you have to part with something, right? Mm. It's but it's not, Yeah, it's unfortunate because now there's someone who maybe is in jail for just not... Yeah being able to yeah, find their way yeah. and, and I think sometimes we facilitate it because of the inefficiencies. Mm. Um, you know, if, if now you want your passport in five days, yeah. the government, you know, you, you told, oh, by the way, you know, our mm. machines have broken down. We yeah. have a backlog of six months yeah. passports we are printing mm. and you have to travel in two months. Yeah. In short, yeah. because of the efficient, that word is just going to come from you. Yes. You're going to ask, mm. hey, is there something we can do about it? Is there a way my passport can, you know, <laughs> Be printed next week. Yeah, like yeah, if you so if you, if the inefficiencies yeah. exactly <laughs> yeah. the inefficiencies are yeah. created, you know, to create obstacles that then yeah. lead into yeah yeah. So for us being young minds in the in the ecosystem, do you, do you think we can take out of this process, or do we even need uh, civil education? Do we need to encourage people to find better ways? Do we even need to like even encourage better policies where people are paid enough not to be you know to be thinking about the only way I can make extra bucks is through corruption? Yeah. Um. I, th yeah I think from how I think about it is, uh, you know, what do you glorify? What mm. do people admire? Mm. Unfortunately, in our case, uh, who, when you think about driving a big car, yeah. who comes to your mind? The politicians. Yes, it's a mm. politician. Our, our, it's not an entrepreneur. Yeah. It's not uh, yeah, yeah. somebody who's actually trying to do good or change the world. Yeah, it's a uh, good case. Is many people don't know which car the CEO of Safaricom drives, or you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah. It, people can when when a car is passing, they can tell you this one is for Kidero, this uh, one is for Songkon, uh, this one is for 
yeah. you know, VPP. Yeah. Exactly. And, and, and you have people like Joshua Igara yeah. and the KCB CEO who is yes. earning like 220 million, which yes. is... Why, do, why don't those cars have flags? Safari con flag, KCB mm. flag. But you'll see the government of Kenya flag mm. and it's allowed, it's misbehaving on the mm. road. But we, that's it's just encouraging misbehavior because yeah. that's rewarded. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you are a politician, you are rewarded uh, you can for do being this and no part. one will ask you. Yeah, yeah. You know, which is uh, quite unfortunate because if we can't fix that, mm. then why should a young Tesh grow up wanting to be something else? True, true. That makes yeah. a lot of sense, actually. So do we like, how do, because <laughs> it's, it's, to be honest, it's a chicken and egg problem. Who, who are the voters? It's, for me, I think it's very simple. Mm. Um, we have to disincentivize politics mm. from being profitable. Okay. Politics, we, we, we kind of, I, I call it the Japan model. Mm -hmm. um, I think if, if, if you read around, uh, you know, how the society of Japan thinks, mm. civil servants mm. are civil servants, okay. including politicians. They are servants. You, you, you are servants. Mm. Um, that's why you will board uh, public transport with them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they are not treated in any special way because they are serving the people. Yeah. The, the people that have this kind of privilege that politicians have here mm. is actually leaders um, of, you know, profit-making institutions. Yeah. So we need to disincentivize.